Hello everyone, my name is Anthony and in today's video we're going to talk about the inertial measurement unit and we're going to talk about how to extract the readings, how to understand what the raw readings are and how to convert it into something usable, apply some sense of fusion algorithm like the complementary filter and then make sense of the orientation of the quadcopter which in a nutshell is called attitude. So in the previous video, we talked about the connection, the embedded connection of the sensors with the microcontroller. We use the LSM303DLH1, which is for an ST microelectronics micro uh, sensor. And then we use the InventSense ITG3200. So these are the sensors that I had used in my microcontroller in the quadcopter. So let's look at the data sheet to understand a little bit about what the accelerometer does and what the act and what the gyroscope does. So in the data sheet, the LSM 303 DLH, the accelerometer measures the, at least for the most part, it's measuring the external acceleration subjected onto the sensor, which in this case is gravity. So the way the sensor works is if it's a, uh, it's got three axes x y z and wherever the force is acting the most which is normally which is gravity it will measure it'll give you a reading in that direction and wherever there is no force exerted on it it'll show you zero so that's the high level nutshell of what the accelerometer does and based on understanding how gravity works uh, and which axis is subjected to the most amount of gravitational force you can find out the orientation of the accelerometer. Similarly, the gyroscope does something a little different. It measures the angular rotation. So it's measuring the x, y, z axis, but it's measuring the rotation across the z axis, the x axis, and the y axis. And that's the difference between a gyroscope and an accelerometer. We're gonna talk a little bit more about the differences and the commonalities as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about what I've drew, drawn over here. Now, the difference between the accelerometer and the gyroscope is one is measuring position and one is measuring angular velocity, all right? Or angular acceleration. What does that mean? It means that if you have an accelerometer and it's giving you position, if I take the differentiation of this, if I differentiate this reading over time, I should get the gyroscope reading. And if I integrate the gyroscope reading, I should get the accelerometer reading. So then you may ask why, if we can mathematically deduce the other sensors reading, why do we need both readings? Why do we need both sensors? And herein lies the critical importance of why you want to have both sensors. An accelerometer will give you a very stable reading over a longer period of time. Whereas a gyroscope will give you a more stable reading in short time. Whereas in the longer, in the longer time frame, it can drift. And we're going to show you how that drift works, or how, I, won't, I won't say how it works, but how the drift can accumulates over a period of time. And to compensate for the drift in the long term, the accelerometer compensate can help you compensate for it. And the inaccuracies accuracies in the accelerometer when it's subjected to a lot of vibrations or changes in the short term, the gyroscope is very good at compensating for the inefficiencies in the accelerometer. And that's the reason why when you combine these two sensors, you can get a more accurate attitude of the quadcopter. And when I say attitude, you're getting the orientation. What's the pitch, what's the you are, and what's the roll. So I'm gonna open MATLAB. And generally, when I do my experiments, I log them onto a file, into a text file, where I have all my readings. So the first readings are the accelerometer, and the next three readings are the gyroscope. So the accelerometer XYZ and the gyroscope XYZ. So these are raw readings. 
You also want to capture the time frame because you want to know at what's the sample rate of your readings. And once you know the sample rate, then you know how frequently how frequently are your readings being captured. Then you know the frequency, you know the sample rate, and from there you can do some computation. You know UART reading, which is connected to the microcontroller when I enable it to send all the signals, send all the raw readings to the um, to an external file, and we add the path and then we read that particular file. Here and I do some initialization, and what I'm trying to do over here is is saying the first part, the first array is the time frame, the next three is the accelerometer reading, and the next three is the gyroscope reading, and that's the XYZ. So that's what we're doing over here. So AX, AY, AZ is the accelerometer XYZ rating, and GX, GY, ZZ is the gyroscope G rating. Then we calculate the time rate, timestamp, and from there we can get the sample rate. And that's the high level overview of how I get the raw readings and bring it into uh, computational software like MATLAB to prose process and really understand what's going on. And then from there, so let's uh, run this program, run this section, and then we'll import the file. Once we've imported the file, we are going to do some adjustments. So the accelerometer and the gyroscope will give you raw readings. It'll be in like ones and ones and, um, so let me look at the reading over here. It's giving you like one, 1.5, it's giving you a 4, it's giving you an 88 over here, a 5, a 0, a 1. So my point is we want to convert these readings into something more usable. Now of course this is a degrees, um, I have converted it, but we want to make sure that if it, the conversion is not done, because the raw readings will just give you one with the axis which has got the maximum gravitational force, It'll, it'll give you 1 or 1.5 depending on what the scale margin again is. And then, then we want to convert it into, an, into degrees basically. So here I've, base, I've added some, com, I've, done, I've added a code where uh, I want to convert the raw readings into degrees. So once we execute the raw readings into degrees, then we want to calculate the pitch and roll from the accelerometer. So here what we have is uh, the pitch and the roll. The pitch is when the quadcopter is moving in the uh, is moving in the front and backward direction, and the roll is when it's moving from left and right. It's rotating it from left and right. So you are looking at the degrees. All right, it's all in degrees. It's all about the angle of the quadcopter. So you can see there is a little bit of an offset from zero, which should be zero, but it's not. And those are the inaccuracies of the sensor. And you are just plotting around, plotting the graph of the accelerometer, which looks pretty smooth. There are some vibrations and some noise in there, but for the most part, it looks pretty smooth. All right. Now let's find out what's happening in the gyroscope reading. This is interesting. So what I have over here is the accelerometer and gyroscope reading, and I've just overlapped them over together. Now it's not going to make too much sense, but what? But if you really dig into it. As I mentioned, when you take the integration of the gyroscope, you should get the accelerometer reading. And if you take the derivative of the accelerometer, you should get the gyroscope reading. Now this is the x-axis and the y-axis. We are not really focusing on the z-axis. Z-axis is when the quadcopter can move uh, around the uh, its vertical frame, a vertical axis, um, which basically can tell you whether it's pointing north, south. So we're, and, and we're omitting that particular axis, we're only focusing on the roll and the pitch. And what we can see from this graph is that a differentiation of a constant is going to be zero. All right, so the blue is the accelerometer. So when you look at this, when at this particular peak, if I take the differentiation of this, of this particular curve, should I get a zero? And the answer is yes. And that's really what the high level graphs tell you. Like if I can plot this with, with respect to the gyroscope, I should be able to high level make some computation, knowing that when there's a slope, when there's the highest level of, when there's a high slope, then the differentiation of that slope should be, um, should be a high value. And if there is no slope, then the differentiation of that should be a zero. So that's what this high level, uh, 
observation can tell you. All right, so what we'll do is we will proceed to the next level. So this is where I talk about, let's plot the graph, and here we'll do the actual differentiation and let's see how, how it works. Because this will tell us whether the gyroscope and the accelerometer are in sync. And if not, then it's, uh, it, we might have to, then there's something wrong with the readings because they both are complementary in nature. And here what we have is the gyroscope reading and now we have differentiated the accelerometer reading. And when we differentiate the accelerometer reading, you can see that it's pretty much in line with the gyroscope reading with a little bit of, and the red one is the if is the differentiated accelerometer reading. And now, yes, there are it is noisy and there are peaks, but the goal is, is it following the curve as much as it can? And the answer is yes. And similarly, with the x-axis and with the y-axis. Now what we'll do is we'll try to integrate the gyroscope and see if we can get the accelerometer curve. This is important to understand what the accelerometer and gyroscope do because they are very complementary in nature and using basic calculus you can understand that you can you can also you can understand you can come to know whether the readings you're getting from the accelerometer and gyroscope are they making sense and if they're not making sense then there's something wrong and just basic mathematics and calcul I mean if you just apply basic calculus you should be able to make sure that the sensor readings are making sense or not and this is one way to do that. Now what we have over here is we have taken the gyroscope reading and we have integrated it and we want to see if we can get the accelerometer reading. And you can see in the x-axis there's a lot of there's a drift. Those following the curve there's a drift. And in the y-axis there's very little drift but it's but there's still some scaling effect that's happening over here. So there is a little bit of inaccuracies in one of the measurements, whether it's the accelerometer or the gyroscope, and we need to compensate for that. So just because you have a sensor that is measuring orientation in the term, in this particular case is the accelerometer, or you might even use the gyroscope, as you can see, once we in integrate, there is, they, cer they certainly do not agree with each other, or they do, but there is a little bit of drift, or there's a scaling effect, and we want to compensate for that. So let's look at the error that's there. And once we understand the error, we can then apply a filter to say, okay, if this is the error, how can we minimize the error and come to a peaceful you know, plot on the understanding of what the at attitude of the quadcopter is? Because we don't know which one is more accurate than the other, but based on the data that we're getting, can we simulate and, and, and use some mathematical model to get a good or good understanding of what the orientation is. As you can see in the X, the error gradually increases. So that means there's some drift in the error. And in the in the Y axis, the error keeps going to zero. It sometimes it fluctuates between zero and sixty, and then it goes to zero. So this is why we need to have a sense of fusion algorithm that can find a common ground between one sense and the other and make a better prediction than using either one or the other. So that's what our next step is gonna be. So we're gonna apply something called the uh, called the complementary filter. Now before we understand and go into the complementary filter, let's understand what the complementary filter is. As I mentioned, so what we have over here is a complementary filter and I've basically drawn a small little block diagram what we have is a gyroscope and an accelerometer. And as I mentioned earlier, that you wanna have sensors that are complementary to each other. In the sense that the gyroscope gives you the angular acceleration, but it's also more accurate in the short term and the short time interval, but it's a little bit less accurate in the long term, as we've mentioned, as we've seen that it drifts away. On the other hand, the accelerometer seems to be more stable in the long, in the long term but in the short sample, when you in the short time frame, it can have a lot more errors. So that's the reason why you, when you're applying a complementary filter, the sensors needs to complement each other. You take the gyroscope raw readings and then you apply it to the inertial frame. So for example, in this particular case, the gyroscope was you know placed upside down on the printed circuit board. So you need to do some computation 
to make sure that it, the readings are in alignment with the whole body frame of the quadcopter. And it, might be, it may not necessarily be in the exact same XYZ axis, so you can compensate that in, after you get the raw reading. Same thing with the accelerometer. You get the acceleration due to gravity, then you want to calculate and get the angles with respect to X, Y, and Z. So there's some little bit of trigonometry that you need to do in order to get the angles. Once you get the body frame and inertial frame, if, as I mentioned, if you integrate the gyroscope reading, you should get the accelerometer. And that's what we're doing over here. So we're taking the accelerometer reading and then we're getting the error. And this is what we're trying to minimize. We're trying to minimize the error between the gyroscope and the accelerometer. Though they're both the two different sensors and they're measuring different things, due to, the, due to this way, they, due to what they are measuring, we can use mathematics to basically get the other sensor reading. And that is what we're trying to find out. Why is there an error? Then what we do is we take that error and then we apply it to a proportional integral controller kind of a thing. So one over S is basically integration. And so that's so that, so you have an integration with the constant and here you have, and you're adding a gain to it. And what we are doing, so what an integration does, an integration is basically calculating the area. So area under the curve. So in this case, we're calculating the area of the error and we're applying a particular gain because they, there is some uh, scaling factor that might be involved in it in order for us to get a more accurate attitude angle. So we add that, we, we take the error, we apply a PI controller to it, and then we feed that into, it's not a controller actually, just a PI a proportional and integral, um, uh, you know, compensator. I'm not too sure what the actual term is, but you're applying a proportional and uh, integral uh, component to the error, and then you're feeding that into the gyroscope reading. The reason being is because this is calculating the error over a long-term period, so you're trying to compensate for that drift. And when you compensate for that drift, you're saying, hey, we've got the gyroscope reading, but you're drifting away, let us minus that drift. That's really what this whole thing is doing. And once we get that drift, once we minus the drift from the actual reading, we are getting the gyroscope's angular rates. And then when we integrate, we should get the accelerometer reading or the angle. And this phi is basically the alti altitude of the quadcopter. So we're always looking at the attitude of the quadcopter by measuring this phi m over here. and we're constantly correcting the gyroscope reading because in the long term, this the gyroscope is drifting away. And in the short term, we're compensating for the accelerometer. And, 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 and in the short term, the inaccuracy of, of the accelerometer is also compensated with this loop over here. So let's see how we're gonna implement this in software. So what I have over here is a complementary filter. I've set the KP and KI gain, which is a proportional and integral gain. And then I'm applying the Kalman filter, sorry, the complementary filter over here. So let's look at the complementary filters, co the code that I developed. It's a very simple filter um, algorithm. Uh, I'm taking the, e I'm initializing certain parameters and I'm taking the, I'm first, um, uh, I'm, this is all initialization and this is a loop. So it's taking all the readings and then we're creating the PI uh, controller over here. And then what we're doing is we're differentiating the gyroscope reading. And that gyroscope reading is nothing but the uh, gyroscope minus the PI controller. And we take that value and then we differentiate, uh, and we do the integration. Sorry, this is the difference, not differentiation. This is the difference. Then we take the integration of that and then we keep, pro and we keep looping this through all the uh, sample system, sample, um, readings. And let's run this code. So I'm going to click run section. And here we'll see how good the complementary filter is able to basically compensate for the inaccuracies. And here we have it. So the orange path is the gyroscope, you know, drifting away over a period of time. And then we're just looking at the x axis. And here we're looking at the complementary filter which is in blue. Pitch angle which is the yellow one is the 
angle of the gyroscope, oh sorry, of the um, accelerometer. So it's taking the gyroscope and the accelerometer doing some computation and it's creating a much more smoother curve than what the gyroscope or the accelerometer individually would have provided. And then let's look at the y-axis. And as you can see, even in the y-axis, the complementary filter is a lot more smoother. The roll angle of the accelerometer is much more, it's got a lot more noise and the gyroscope is drifting away. There's a lot more drift in the gyroscope reading. And the complementary filter, which is in blue, seems to have a much more smoother transition. And that's what we want. We want a reading that, we don't want it to be too noisy. We want it to be kind of cleaned out, cleaned up, so that we can get a better understanding of the orientation of the quadcopter. So that's how you take the readings from the quadcopter, the accelerometer, and the gyroscope. You clean up the data. You apply some computation so that you can get that raw reading and map it into uh, the, the inertial frame of the quadcopter as for the gyroscope. And for the accelerometer, you clean it up and then you calculate the angles, which is the attitude angle, the roll angle, and the pitch angle. And then you apply a sensor fusion algorithm and before you apply a sensor fusion algorithm, it's very important to also apply, it, you know, take the integration of the derivative of the of either sensor and see whether you get the readings of the other sensor, and at least see whether it's matching a pattern, whether it's matching a graph, whether it resembles the same orientation, and if it's not, then there's something wrong with the readings. Maybe you have done, maybe your setup or your initialization or the way you've computed the raw readings to the inertial frame of the quadcopter, there might be some error. And you want to compensate for that. So that's a that's a high level check of knowing whether you're actually looking at the as whether the sensors are making sense. And then from there you apply sensor fusion algorithm and you'll get a much more cleaner graph. And that's the process when it comes to sensor fusion, understanding the attitude of your attitude angles of your quadcopter. All right. I hope this video makes sense. I highly recommend you to subscribe to our channel so that you can get, you'll be notified when we create videos of this nature. And I will try to share this code, though this is very specific to the sensor that I'm using, but overall the, it's at least the beginning part of the code, but eventually, but the actual um, complementary filter and how the whole processing is done is quite universal. You can apply it to any sensor. So I'll start to share once this series of uh, how to make your own quadcopter from the grounds up is over. And I thank you so much for listening and see you next time.